I am here to talk about Jesus throughout the Bible. In Genesis, Jesus Christ is the breath of life. In Exodus, he is the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he is our high priest. In Numbers, he is a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he is a prophet like unto Moses. In Joshua, he is the captain of our salvation. In Judges, he is our judge and lawgiver. In Ruth, he is our king's main redeemer. In First and Second Samuel, he is our trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, he is our reigning king. In Ezra and Nehemiah, he is the rebuilder of broken down walls in human lives. In Esther, he is our Mordecai. In Job, he is our ever living redeemer. In Psalms, he is our shepherd. In Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, he is our wisdom. In Song of Solomon, he is our loving bridegroom. In Isaiah, he is our Prince of Peace. In Jeremiah, he is our righteous branch. In Lamentations, he is our weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, he is a wonderful full-faced man. In Daniel, he is the fourth man in life fairly fairness. In Hosea, he is a faithful husband forever married to the black sliders. In Joel, he is the baptizer of Holy Ghost and fire. In Amos, he is our burden bearer. In Obadiah, he is mighty to save. In Jonah, he is our great form missionary. In Micah, he is a messenger of beautiful feet. In Nahum, he is our strength and shield. In Habakkuk, he is God evangelist crying, Revive thy words in the midst of the years. In Zephaniah, he is our savior. In Haggai, he is the restorer of God's lost heritage. In Zechariah, he is the found and open up to the house of David for our sins and uncleanness. In Malachi, he is the stone of righteousness, writing with healing in his wings. Now in Matthew, Jesus Christ is the king of the Jews. In Mark, he is our servant. In Luke, he is the son of man, feeling what we feel. In John, he is the son of God. In Acts, he is the savior of the world. In 1 Corinthians, he is the rock, the father of his who above. In 2 Corinthians, he is the triumphant one given victory. In Galatians, he is your liberty to set you free. In Ephesians, he is the head of your church. In Philippians, he is your joy. In Colossians, he is your completeness. In 1 and 2 Thessalonians, he is your hope. In 1 Timothy, he's your faith. In 2 Timothy, he's your stability. In Titus, he's your truth. In Philemon, he's your benefactor. In Hebrews, he's your perfection. In James, he's the power behind your faith. In 1 Peter, he's your example. In 2 Peter, he's your purity. In 1 John, he's your life. In 2 John, he's your pardon. In 3 John, he's your motivation. In Jude, he's the foundation of your faith. And in Revelation, it's our soon coming king. He's the first and last, the beginning and the end, the keeper of creation and the creator of all. None can be compared unto his name. He is my Lord, your Lord and our soon coming king. He's the architect of the universe and the manager of it all. He always was, he always is, and he always will be. Unmoved, unchanged, undefeated, uncomparable. This is my Lord. His views that brought us healing. He was pierced in his pain. He was persecuted and brought freedom. He was dead and brought life. He is risen and brings power. He reigns and brings peace. Because Herod couldn't kill him. The Pharisees couldn't confuse him. The Sadducees couldn't silence him. And the people couldn't understand him. Yes, he is alive and he reigns forever. He is the almighty God. The I am that I am. The mighty one. The self-sufficient one. The omniscient. The omnipotent and the omnipresent. Holy, righteous. Mighty, the only wise God. His ways are right and his word is eternal. And you know what? That name Jesus. He is my savior. He is my redeemer. He is my benefactor. He is my protector. He is my peace. He is my joy. He is my comforter. He is my supplier. And above all, he is my Lord. And he rules my life. Let's do it unto Jesus. Let's do it unto the Lord. 